Okay, so I would say this example is a little bit more involved because not only is it needing you to find the points of contact, in other words, the coordinates, but it also wants you to find the equations of these tangents as well. So let's just read this question, and this is going to be quite a long one, so get prepared for all the stuff we're going to do. Find the equations and the points of contact of the tangents to the curve r equals a sine 2 theta, and note that theta is between 0 and pi over 2. And you want to find the tangents which are parallel to the initial line and perpendicular to the initial line. I'm going to do parallel to the initial line. I'm then going to ask you to have a go at doing perpendicular to the initial line. You can pause the video and then compare it to what I've done. So for something to be parallel to the initial line, we know that dy by d theta is equal to zero. When you do this bit later, dx by d theta is going to be equal to zero. So let's get started. Um, we know that r is a sine 2 theta, but I need to find out what y is, and y is r sine theta. So I'm going to sub this r into here to find out what y is. So it's going to be a sine 2 theta sine theta. And I'm just going to differentiate this. So dy by d theta, I'm going to use the product rule and just do it in my head. I'm going to keep this one the same and I'm going to multiply it by the derivative of sine theta, which is cos theta. I'm then going to keep the sine theta the same, and I'm going to differentiate by the derivative of a sine 2 theta, which is 2a cos 2 theta. And I know that this whole expression here is going to be equal to 0. So 0 equals a sine 2 theta cos theta plus 2a cos 2 theta sine theta. I can cancel out the a's because I can just divide everything by a. And my big problem here is that I've got a mixture of different arguments. So I've got some two thetas and I've got some thetas. I'm going to deal with this by getting everything all in terms of theta. So sine two theta is two sine theta cos theta. But remember, I'm multiplying by a cos theta, so it'll be a cos squared theta. And then here I've got a two. I'm going to pull the sine theta to the front. Now, cos 2 theta, I'm just going to go with the standard one of cos theta minus sine squared theta, but it's not really going to matter which one you use here. It's always going to work out with the same equation. So let's expand and keep going with this equation. So it's 2 sine theta cos squared theta minus 2 sine cubed theta. Now, you can see these first two terms here as, are the same, so they can be simplified. So I get 4 sine theta cos squared theta minus 2 sine cubed theta. Now, first of all, I'm going to divide everything by 2. So I get 2 sine theta cos squared theta minus sine cubed theta. And you'll notice that there's a sine theta I can divide everything by. So if I get rid of this sine theta and I divide this by sine theta, I've simplified it. But with trig equations and all equations that equal 0, if you cancel something out, that thing could be equal to zero. So I'm going to put a star by this because we're going to come back to that one later on. So my remaining equation is 2 cos squared theta minus sine squared theta. I'm going to put the sine squared theta onto the other side and I'm going to keep the cos squared theta here. I'm going to turn this into a tan equation so I get that tan squared theta equals 2. So tan theta is equal to plus or minus root 2. But in the question, they told us that theta is in between 0 and pi over 2. And so if theta is between 0 and pi over 2, if it's um, an acute angle, we know that tan is positive for acute angles. So we're going to just take the positive one. But because theta is between 0 and pi over 2, tan theta is equal to the square root of 2. So we've got these two answers now. We've got sine theta being equal to 0 and we've got tan theta being root two. So let's try and find out, um, well, what the values of theta are gonna be. So I'll start off by doing the inverse tan of root two here. You should be in radians mode. So I'll do the inverse tan of root two, which is 0.955. And it's okay that it's just going to be as a decimal value here because it's not an exact value. And obviously the inverse sine of zero is going to be zero. And because again, we're between zero and pi over two, there's no other values that we need to do. So we're trying to find these coordinates. We found what theta is. We now need to find what r is. 
Remember, r is a sine 2 theta, a sine 2 theta. So if theta is 0 for this one on the right hand side, r would just be equal to 0. So my first coordinate where the tangent is parallel to the initial line is 0, 0. Now, if it is parallel to the initial line at 0, 0, we need to say what the equation of the tangent is. And the equation of this line, this tangent line, is just going to be theta equals 0. So I'm going to just put this one here with a little red bit around it. That's my point of contact, and that's my equation of the tangent. I've now done it for this part. I'm going to do it for this part over here. So again, I'm going to use this r to find out what the length of the line is. So or for the for the length of the line, so the polar coordinate. So it's going to be a sine 2 theta. Now, I don't want to put a decimal number in here because I'm going to get a decimal number and I want to keep it as an exact value. It usually would ask for an exact value in the question. So I'm going to have to do some manipulation. Sine theta is 2 sine theta cos theta. And because I know what tan theta is equal to, I can find out what sine theta and cos theta are. There's many ways of doing this. My favourite way is to draw a triangle. So tan is the opposite over the adjacent. Just think to yourself what the hypotenuse would be. The hypotenuse would be the square root of root 2 squared plus 1 squared, which is root 3. So that tells me that sine theta is root 2 over root 3. And cos theta is 1 over root 3. So I can find out what r is. It is 2a multiplied by sine theta multiplied by cos theta, which all simplifies to 2 root 2 over 3a. So for this set of things that I was doing down here, we've now got that the point of contact of, for the point where it's uh, horizontal, the point of contact is 2 root 2 over 3a and 0.955. So we've got some curve, and actually I'll show you what the curve looks like in a bit, but the curve looks like a petal shape, like this. I'm just going to do it a little bit smaller. And we have found out that there is a tangent from the one that I've drawn in red so far over here, and we're just saying that there's going to be another tangent over here like this. And this point where there's a tangent has the polar coordinate of that. OK. Now, I'm going to try and find out what the equation of this tangent is. If I was going Cartesian, think to yourself what it would look like. If it was Cartesian, the equation would be a y equals thing. It would be a y equals part. And for this coordinate, if this is r and this is theta, we know that y is r sine theta. So I'm going to find out what the y equation is, and then I'm going to change that from Cartesian to polar. Let's just say that one more time. I'm going to find out what the y coordinate is. In other words, how high it is away from here. If I get a y equals equation, I know how to go from a Cartesian equation into a polar equation. And because this whole question is in a polar language, I need to keep it in that polar language. So y is equal to r for this particular point, which is 2 root 2a, multiplied by sine theta, which we've got up here, which is root 2 over root 3. So this is going to simplify to, the numerator is 2 times root 2 times root 2, which is 4a over 3 root 3. So this is the Cartesian equation, 4a over 3 root 3. But we don't want the Cartesian equation. We want the polar. And to go from the equation y equals 4a over 3 root 3, right back at the beginning of this topic, we need to change this. We just substitute y with r sine theta. So this gives us that r is equal to 4a over 3 root, over 3 root 3. We're dividing by sine theta. And when you divide by sine theta, you get cosec theta. So in conclusion, the contact points and their tangents which are parallel to
to the initial line are 0, 0 and theta equals 0 and 2 root 2a over 3, 0.955 and its equation, let's squeeze it here, r equals 4a over 3 root 3 cosec theta. So I'm going to really just quickly show you this on Desmos. This one is going to be coming up later on. So it is the first loop of this petal, which is in red. And you can see I've typed in for the black line 4a over 3 root 3 cosec theta. And if you were to think about where that black line crosses the y-axis, it crosses the y-axis at this value that I've got here, 4a over 3 root 3. That's the, the Cartesian version. This is when it's converted into polar. So this process is pretty long. I would like you to have a go at trying to do it perpendicular to the initial line. So pause the video and have a go. I'm going to continue so that you can check your answer afterwards. It's going to be basically the same process, but just with uh, the beginning part starting off with dx dt three equals zero. Have a go, see how it goes. I'm going to get on with this now. So I better add in a couple more pages, I think. Okay. So now we're doing part B of the question and part B of the question just going to remind us it's r equals a sine 2 theta. I hope I've written that down right. Yep. And we're going to try and do dx d theta equals 0 because we're looking for something which is perpendicular to the initial line. So we know that x is equal to r cos theta. So x is equal to r. Better keep that argument the same and cos theta here. Differentiating this, so dx d theta is going to be, differentiate, keep this first part the same, sorry. So it's a sine two theta, and cos goes to minus sine theta. Then I'm gonna differentiate the first bit, which is going to be two a cos two theta, and keep the next bit the same like this. So my dx d theta, I know that's gonna be equal to zero, so let's save a line. I'm going to have, I'm gonna bring this bit first, 2a cos 2 theta cos theta minus a sine 2 theta sine theta. As before, you can cancel out the a's. As before, we need to deal with the arguments. So I'm going to do 2, pull that cos theta to the front. I'm going to go with the classic one of cos squared 2 theta and do cos squared theta minus sine squared theta. And then I'm going to have 2 sine theta cos theta, but it's actually going to be sine squared theta cos theta because of this extra sine theta that we've got at the back that will make the sine squared theta here. Let's expand everything. So that's 2 cos cubed theta minus 2 cos theta sine squared theta minus 2 sine squared theta cos theta. And hopefully you can spot this thing here and this thing, even though these bits are written the other way around from each other, they are the same. So we get 2 cos cubed theta minus 4 cos theta sine squared theta. I'm going to divide everything by 2. So I have cos cubed theta minus 2 cos theta sine squared theta. And you'll notice I can cancel out a cos theta with both of them. But if you cancel out cos theta, we know that cos theta could be equal to zero. So this leaves me with cos squared theta minus two sine squared theta, or two sine squared theta equals cos squared theta. I'm going to divide by cos squared, so I get two tan squared theta equals one. Tan squared theta equals a half. And so tan theta is one over root two. It could be plus or minus, but because of the range of theta, it's not going to be negative. It's going to be the positive one that we've got there. So let's pull this down so that we're working in the same space. I'm gonna deal with the cos theta being equal to zero to begin with. When cos theta is equal to zero, theta is equal to pi over two. And we can also find out what the value of r is. r is going to be equal to a sine two theta. So that's going to be a times the sine of pi, which is zero. So this point of contact is going to be zero pi over two. 
And if it's zero in pi over two, there's the initial line. And we're saying that it has got the length of the line is, sorry, the coordinate is zero and the angle is pi over two. At this point, it's going to be a line that is just vertical like this. And so the equation of the tangent is going to be theta equals pi over two. And I'll write these bits down later on. So we've got theta is pi over two and the equation of the tangent is that theta equals pi over two. Now let's work on the harder one. Let's find out what theta is by doing the inverse tan of one over root two. So that's 0 0.615. But we need to find out what r is. So r is sine two theta, same process as before. That's two a sine theta cos theta. This time though, our sine theta and cos theta are gonna be different because we have one over root two. There's our root three. Sine theta is one over root three and cos theta is root two over root three. So r is two a times one over root three times root two over root three, which is two root two a over three. So we're getting a bit tired because there's a lot to do here. So our coordinate, our contact point is two root two a over three and the angle is 0 0.615. Now remember we're talking about something on this curve. Let's draw a sketch of it again. There's the initial line and it's there looking like this. We're saying that it is going to be perpendicular to the initial line. So the Cartesian equation of this at this particular point where we know the value of r and the value of theta would be an x equals kind of thing. So our Cartesian is x equals, well, we know that it's going to be x equals r cos theta. So the length of that line r is 2 root 2 over 3a. Cos theta is this one here, root 2 over root 3. It's basically the same as the previous example. So x equals 4a over 3 root 3, really similar to before. So the Cartesian equation is this, but we don't want the Cartesian. We want to convert x equals 4a over 3 root 3. We want to convert that into polar. So r cos theta is how we convert it, 4a over 3 root 3, divide by cos theta, and we get sec theta. So all I'm going to do now is a bit of a conclusion. I'm going to say so points of contact and the equations of their tangents that are perpendicular to the initial line are zero pi over two and theta equals pi over two. That was this one that we gathered from this bit up here. And then the second one was going to be my coordinate that I have here. That's two root two a over three and 0 0.615. And the equation of that tangent is r equals four a over three root three sec theta. So I'm going to just come back to Desmos to show you that this is what has worked. So for the perpendicular one, there is my equation of the tangent that I've got there. And you can see how it's um, perpendicular to the initial line. I'm going to add in the other ones that we didn't actually mention earlier. So one of them was that theta is equal to zero. So theta equals zero. I don't know why it doesn't like that one of theta being equal to zero, but you can imagine what that's going to look like. You can see how if I zoomed in, it would just be skimming through that origin line. And if theta was equal to pi over two, it would be like the y-axis. So I can probably draw that a little bit better on here. So here's the petal shape, terribly drawn. There's gonna be a tangent here and here for the second part of the question. And for the first part of the question, there was one here and here. Hopefully you can spot that it's tangential at this point and this point here.
So pretty crazy question. Lots and lots of thinking in that one. I love how part B is the same. It's like the mirror image of part A in so many different ways. Um, but look how many pages this took up. I'm hoping that you had a go at doing that one. So you can mostly do um, exercise 5D here. I'm going to finish off with a proof about something I mentioned on much earlier on in this playlist.